He was either the most innovative and genius music marketer, or just another money-hungry artist desperate for attention. Something we can't deny is, Mario was unique. He was talented, but now, he is gone. Mario Judah has been doing the bare minimum to even remind his fans he's still alive. What really happened to Mario Judah? Is there some conspiracy with this shit or what? Is he still alive? Where the fuck is Mario Judah? In the past 15 months, Mario has only made a few appearances on his social media of 650,000 followers and has posted four songs just to meet label obligations. Which doesn't seem like a big deal for most artists, but Mario was the most viral, polarizing new artist the internet had seen since the SoundCloud rap era in 2017. Unfortunately, Mario has had a few sticky situations with management, record labels, and his own greed that have contributed to his fall off. In the summer of 2020, Mario posted his self-produced song called Die Very Rough on SoundCloud. At the time, it only had a few hundred plays, but this caught the attention of a Maryland-based videographer who was a critical part of helping Lil Skies in his early career, J-Law from One Room Media. J-Law is an extremely important part of Mario's present day situation. J-Law likes to tap in with small artists and he could hear the potential that Mario had. When they linked up, they shot a music video to his song Die Very Rough. Mario and J-Law hit it off. Mario even slept in the One Room Media studio for seven weeks and signed a contract for J-Law to be his manager. J-Law would earn 25% of Mario's revenue, but didn't have any ownership of his music or anything like that. It was a little aggressive for a management contract, but Mario had literally a few hundred followers on social media, so it was kind of a big risk. Crazy enough, just a couple weeks later, a tweet was posted that would start a viral whirlwind for them. Mario was blowing up. The Die Very Rough music video was generating hundreds of thousands of views per day, so they got to work, making a bunch of different content, vlogs, interviews, and Instagram lives. Some people were making fun of and memeing Mario, but you could tell he was genuine. He seemed like a humble kid who was grateful that people connected with his music, and he could also laugh at himself because he knew he was kind of ridiculous. By the way, now is a good time for me to mention that before doing this video, I reached out to J-Law for a lot of this information. So drink water while you're watching. This type of virality isn't normal. It was genuine, so record labels were calling. J-Law was officially Mario's manager, so he was the one doing the negotiating. But they were getting lowballed. $50,000, $75,000. J-Law even told me these record labels hated him because he was being a little too cocky. They didn't think Mario was worth much since he only had one viral song, but J-Law believed in him. Eventually, they got a $300,000 offer that seemed a little more promising. The offer was a $100,000 advance, $100,000 marketing budget, and $100,000 for a Ski Mask the Slump God feature combined with a Cole Bennett Lyrical Lemonade music video. And on top of that, he would get to perform at Rolling Loud. We would need two EPs in order to make the 300k make sense, which would be around 10 to 14 songs total. Real quick if you aren't familiar. When you get money from a record label, this is basically a loan. So you need to pay it all back. So after taxes and paying J-Law 25%, Mario's $100,000 advance turns in about 40K or maybe 50K. But then he would be in debt 300,000. So they're asking for 14 songs to be released by them in order for them to have a chance at making that money back. Now J-Law says the contract was way more aggressive than what they said in this email. The contract stated that the label would own Mario's masters until five years after they were released and that he would only be receiving a 20% royalty on the music and the label receives 80%. Basically, J-Law said, Mario, we should pass on this since they lied and it just kind of seemed sketchy. Mario agreed with him. J-Law went home, went back to the One Room Media studio the next morning and Mario was gone. They have not spoken since. So what happened? Everything was just all good. There was no bad blood between them and Mario seemed to be a nice guy. So where did he go? Well. We can't be certain, but the next day he was on Instagram with DJ Scheme, so it was pretty evident that he got a flight to LA in the middle of the night and probably went and signed that record deal. What he didn't realize is that he signed a contract with J-Law, so J-Law had to get bought out, which he eventually did. Mario never got a Cole Bennett video. He also never got a Ski Mask feature. After he dipped, all of his music was released through Atlantic Records. He did get to perform at Rolling Loud, and that was, well, another viral moment. A lot of people were assuming- <laughs> That's gotta be racist, there's no way. The Rolling Loud hype lasted a few weeks. He even got a few shout outs from Denzel Curry and Lil Uzi Vert, and he was already becoming a household name. But you know the internet game moves fast. He had to come up with something else. Playboy Cardi was on the verge of dropping his two year anticipated album, Whole Lotta Red. Mario went on the internet basically threatening Cardi. Drop Whole Lotta Red so I don't have to do this. He previewed a few songs on IG Live that sounded like Cardi, but it was actually Mario. 
These threats were genius because Mario was acting like a fan. So Cardi's fan base looked at him as like their leader. His follower count was growing rapidly. He was getting the same amount of attention, if not more, than when Die Very Rough went viral. A lot of people thought that he was behind the scenes hired to promote Cardi's album. I don't think this was the case. I think that he was getting real fans off Cardi's name, and he actually dropped an EP called Whole Lot of Red. Four tracks, all self-produced, of Mario doing his best Cardi impersonation, with the single Bit Yeah getting millions of views and streams. Just a few weeks later, Cardi dropped his album, so Mario didn't have any more reason to continue the meme. So again, he needed another marketing gimmick to keep the attention. Bro, and she took my fucking heart, and you know what the fuck she did with it? She so he pulled up on his cheating ex-girlfriend on Instagram Live. Oh, fuck, stop the car, bro. Stop the car. Hell no, nah, bro. Are you fucking serious? This bitch right here with the fuck. Are you fucking serious, bro? Somehow people thought this was real, and he quickly had to admit that this was all a setup to promote his new song, I Can I Love You, which was a rock rap song about cheating. Unfortunately, the promotion did not work the way he wanted to. I mean, the song was still getting great views just wasn't viral. Compared to 9 million on Big Yeah, under 1 million views looks like a failure, but those are still great numbers. After January of 2021, Mario kind of disappeared. The next we heard of him was when a snippet of his leaked. The song was a collaboration with Trippy Red and potentially Playboy Cardi. Miss the Rage was one of the most anticipated tracks of 2021 ever since Trippy posted it earlier that year. I'm Mr. Rage. Good morning, Ragers. Are you ready, Ragers? It really seemed like Mario was hinting that this collaboration would drop. Trippy even posted a video of him listening to it, but once the real version dropped without Mario, fans said that his version was better. That was in May of 2021, which is almost a full year ago. He was already fading out of relevance, and he basically hasn't posted or said anything since then. Four months later, he dropped a whole music video with zero promotion, which actually did good views. Half a million in a month with no promotion shows that people really still care. Then he went live in the middle of the night admitting that he was having management issues. I had this bitch ass manager that was fing. Man, I ain't even gonna get into that, bro. And remember, this isn't J Law. This is his new management. At this point, J Law already was bought out of his contract, which makes our case of him signing a fed up contract even stronger. The next live was him straight up leaking one of his songs, just a black screen, and plays the whole song from start to finish. And then the most recent appearance was two months ago with an NFT project. I won't go too deep into it. I don't think it's scammy, but I think bro just really needs some money. Basically, if you buy his Rockstar Ragers NFT, you get access to unreleased music, exclusive signed merch, and chances to get future meet and greets. The people he's working with on this NFT set up a Discord event where fans could ask questions and it was horrible. Go over like why you were like inspired to do a project like this and like why exactly you're looking to like bring together your fans for that. Uh, shit. Uh, he really couldn't even answer the question as to why he was releasing an NFT. But again, in this Discord event, he said he had management issues. Outside of the NFT, when's new music dropping? That's what I'm saying, y'all. I, I gotta, I gotta be, I gotta talk to y'all about that soon, man. It ain't really what it seems right now. You can just feel his spirit is gone. No more happy, energetic, and lovable Mario. Maybe he should have just trusted J-Law and not bailed on him. I mean, how much did Mario's new management actually do for him? They got him on Rolling Loud, but other than that, all of Mario's attention came from his own efforts on social media. Plus, he makes his own beats, writes his songs. He really could have been a strong independent artist. But a lot of artists make this mistake. They sign f***ed up contracts, chasing the money and thinking they're gonna blow up and become Lil Uzi overnight. Truth is, all these new friends you get when you get in the music industry ain't your friend. You're just a dollar sign to them. On the other hand, if Mario is in a bad deal, why not just tough it out and try to use their connections to blow up? Sure, they might be making way more money than him, but if you keep grinding, it's in their best interest to help you if it's going well. Plus, the bigger and more famous you get, the more leverage you have. You might as well just play the music industry game. Isn't that much better than just falling way off? Because coming back and generating interest like he had before is so, so hard. Borderline impossible. I think Mario is just posting and dropping enough music to satisfy whatever legal obligations he has to, but he's saving all of his best songs for the vault. Then I guess he's gonna try to come back with another crazy-ass marketing strategy when he gets his management deal figured out. I think he can do it. He still has a fan base that rides for him, plus he has real talent. He can produce, sing, and rap a little bit. And he is very unique. And on top of that, the rage sound that he was part of kind of blowing up 
is still fresh right now. He could easily take over that space. The time is running out for Mario. He needs to make a decision quickly.